some are with us. Uh, thank you, Lindsay, for recording. And thank you, Shed, for, for sharing the slides. Just, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves if, if, if you're not familiar with us already. Uh, my name is Luis Alvarado. My, my full-time role here at American University is uh, Assistant Director of Learning Design, part of the Office of Digital Learning and Strategy. So we, some of you are aware of my, my work, have worked with me in the past, really focused on online learning, how we can make uh, sort of online learning more engaging, a little bit more innovative here at AU and have had the pleasure of collaborating with many of you. And uh, super excited to present this opportunity uh, to collaborate internationally, introduce that into your classrooms, but with my colleagues from CTRL. So I'll let Shed introduce herself as well. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Shed, like the thing in your backyard. I go by she or they pronouns. I work at the Teaching and Research Center on campus, and my job is teaching and learning specialist, which means I help instructors uh, support their teaching and their growth in teaching, especially around equity and inclusion, which is why we're really excited to be part of COIL, which is an excellent um, sort of uh, tool for equitable teaching. All right, and Elise, I will pass it to you to uh, get us started. Awesome, thank you, Shed. So just a little bit of review of what we're gonna go through today. We'll, we'll try not to talk for too long. We wanna split it up a little bit as far as 30 minutes of kind of presentation and then like 30 minute open discussion because we want you all to be active participants, right? Uh, you're part of, of this team, right? Of developing and molding this pilot, this COIL, Collaborative Online International Learning project here at AU. Uh, so I do, I'm very thankful to have as many voices, as, many, as much brain power as we have today to sort of discuss how we can improve the current process, kind of showcase what we have in mind, and then see if we, there's any tweaks or possibilities for improvement that we can make uh, as we present this to you. That being said, we're going to walk through what is COIL. For, for those who are unfamiliar, we're going to go through the definition, go into a little bit of context of where it came from, where it started. Then we're also going to talk about the benefits, right? The benefits to the students, but also delve into a little bit of the benefits for yourself as a faculty member and what it can do for your course, uh, you know, as far as engaging your students and potentially increasing those student evaluations, right? As far as satisfaction, things of that nature. Um, what are the components, right? How does COIL even work? We're gonna go into some of the, the structures and we're also gonna be able to showcase some examples, some, some examples of, of past COIL projects, just to begin to sort of, you know, get that mind going creatively as far as, you know, that final question, is COIL a good fit for my course? I don't expect all of you to have that answer immediately today. You know, we are having this session here in the summertime. We do have some current active COIL projects in development for fall and spring, but this is gonna be something ongoing. So maybe you wanna join us in the fall or the spring, or maybe you wanna wait till next year. You know, this is something we wanna continuously support uh, at AU for, you know, for the foreseeable future. So uh, definitely wanted to add a little bit of that caveat. But before we do something very typical of a COIL project, as far as how it gets started, is we have a little bit of an icebreaker, right? We, we kind of, uh, talk, uh, you know, ask a sort of casual question. And it is summertime. You all, uh, I'm just so thankful for you to be here. You could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with us. Uh, so we want to know, what, what are your ideal summer plans? What would they look like? So we're going to have a very uh, casual here, Mentimeter poll uh, that my colleague Shed's going to put up in a moment. And it's going to ask you, you know, to choose what your ideal summer plans would be. So I'm just going to give her a moment. Give a moment. Oh, she sh shared the link here. So this is an anonymous poll um, and feel free to just answer. There's no right answer, but I tried to include a variety of locations um, and then I'll share the results in a second. Some great choices here for you to choose from. Uh, some folks really enjoy a staycation, right? Sometimes we're so busy. It's nice to be able to not do anything, to sort of put a pause uh, on, on our traditional uh, work. And so a staycation could do it. Some of you, it's a safari. Maybe you wanna sort of explore new regions, new areas. Others, it's a cruise. You know, I, I actually, I gotta admit, I, it's not my only form of travel, but I do enjoy a cruise just because I feel like it's 
it's an element of relaxation that is hard to achieve sometimes when you're trying to plan uh, like, you know, very thoughtful trip to a specific country. It's a lot of planning and logistics that I think with cruising, you don't have to think about. Northern Lights, that's on the bucket list. I feel like that's a bucket list item there for, for folks to see the Northern Lights uh, in whatever capacity. And then La Playa, you know, the beach, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Surprised that this is number one. I would not have suspected the beach to be number one, but I, I do love it. There's something beautifully calming about the water, the waves, uh, potentially a drink in your hand, uh, you know, and just enjoying time pass by. And then a, a little humorous here, take me back to 2019, uh, you know, for whatever reason, we, <laughs> we, have, it, we might wish uh, to be able to go back in time. And I, I, time travel can also be an ideal summer plan if, if that was a possibility. We'll keep you all in the loop when COIL becomes a time travel style uh, pedagogy, but we don't have the technology yet. <laughs> it's in the works. It's in the works. So I love that. Unexpected, the beach. I, I must admit, some of you know this because uh, I, I live full time uh, in in South Florida, so I have access to to the beach quite often. So I feel like I, I take it for granted. So um, clearly, I need to check out the water more often because it's it's a valuable commodity. So thank you all for taking the time to answer that. All right, now going back into it, back to business here with our next slide. We want to talk about what what is COIL, right? And then what are those benefits to students? Uh, and I, I just want to add for, for that context. No, it's okay. You can switch it. Go ahead, switch it, Shed. Thank you so much for that context as far as uh, student benefits. I, I think to, to Shed's point, there's a lot of access and opportunity that COIL can provide uh, that might otherwise be difficult. So I just want to put that into the framework as I, as I talk a little bit about what is COIL. So, and I'm using COIL, right? I'm using that uh, sort of abbreviation here, but it stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. Using these uh, you know, pieces of technology that we use every day now uh, to really leverage collaboration, right? Be able to connect students with international peers uh, in a way that might otherwise be difficult. Uh, you know, maybe in the physical form of that collaboration. We, have the opportunity to collaborate virtually better than ever before. And this is actually not something new. It, it started almost a decade ago from the State University System of New York. Uh, and so they have wonderful resources. We, we have a, a slide here at the end of, that we'll share with you that has some links to resources of some of these seminal universities who have started COIL. But it did start in SUNY and really was an opportunity to connect students, professors, with their colleagues from international institutions, right? Bringing the, the world, right, into your classroom. So it's not always within a fully online course, right? Sometimes it's in a face-to-face -face course, but what is common is we're using technology, the online learning modality to make that connection, to make that collaboration. So I don't want you to think that collaborative online international learning means that it has to be a fully online course. It just means that the collaboration, the learning process, the platform that's being used for COIL is within an online platform, right, of some sort of your choosing. So what are the benefits, right? I, I think clearly there's an opportunity to just engage and learn and sort of open your mind. We have a, we have a, a colleague, Derek, I'm going to call you out. You're in the UN right now. You know, we, some of you are absolute experts within international learning and are actively making an impact right now, like, like Derek is. And we can help our students get there by introducing them to the world and, and really connecting them with peers that although they're from an international country, there still might be some similarities, right? They still might find some deeper connections of, of being a college student and, and realize that, hey, I'm getting to know this culture in a, in a deeper sense than I would have if I'm just traveling as a tourist right? Because I'm actually connecting with people from there uh, to accomplish something, right? To finish a project. Of course, it does help students get that global context that they can take on, you know, wherever they go. The world is only getting smaller. It's only getting more interconnected. These skill sets are going to be more and more valuable to be internationalized and be able to be dynamic within various cultures, I think is, is something of an expectation moving forward. 
Uh, and then for my office, why my office really wants to get in, involved is we want to help you explore some of those digital learning technologies that can make COIL a lot of fun for you and your students, whether that's using Zoom exclusively, using tools like Slack, uh, leveraging Flipgrid, Padlet. There, there's a multitude of tools out there that my office wants to support you as faculty members to implement when it comes to COIL. So that's the cool thing is we want to be fully supportive on the technological front. So that's not a stressor for you if you want to sort of accomplish this, uh, this project, right? Be a part of it. And then finally, it forges those deep connections that could potentially last longer than the semester. And more importantly, as I've worked with my colleagues from study abroad, it could open our students' minds to explore different countries for study abroad, right? I, I, I connected with uh, Jeff, uh, you know, we have a wonderful study abroad percentage participation, like 56%. It's one of the top in the nation as far as how many students participate. But we're not, we're not getting everybody. And when we do get those 56%, almost exclusively, a lot of them go to European nations. And, you know, there's a lot of reasonings behind that. However, potential exposure and connection with students from maybe different regions that are just as safe, just as uh, easily as accessible, might again open the mind of what these students can do and explore with study abroad later on. So thank you, Shed. So what are the components? What's the breakdown of a COIL course? We, we try to make it as simple as possible. It's two instructors, hopefully one of you that are here with us today, and then an international partner, right? An instructor of an international course. And so it's two separate courses. Sometimes they're connected by subject matter, Sometimes they have no connection at all, right? It, it, they're sort of loosely connected. They could be connected through the project. Uh, one of the greatest examples, and we'll show some examples, but is like architecture students with anthropology students, right? So it's two different domains, but they really can, can lead to a very interesting collaborative project. So it doesn't always have to be connected to your domain. Of course, it's two universities participating in this. There is a bit of coordination with the syllabi in regards to this project, right? We wanna be as transparent as possible with students letting them know, hey, there's gonna be this, this COIL project uh, in, incorporated into this course, uh, you know, and these are some formalities. And we'll develop a template, syllab syllabus template that we've gotten from colleagues here uh, at other COIL institutions to, to help you out with that verbiage, right? So we can get it right, but we do wanna be transparent. Uh, students attend classes with their own instructors, right? They get graded by their own instructors. So it, it's not like a formal partnership, right? You're not grading their students. They're not grading your students, but they all are co-developing something together, right? Uh, that, you know, the professor at institution A will, will sort of grade the students as part of that institution. And then uh, us will grade uh, our students and, as part of our institution, but they've gotten to collaborate on a deliverable. Lectures may be shared, this is optional. There's examples of asynchronous collaboration and synchronous collaboration. So it's really up to you uh, and, and your faculty partner how much you want to share. It really could be just focused on an individual project. Uh, so, you know, a lot of success happens when you invite them into the Zoom room, invite them to your classroom and whatnot, and you could have that connection, that, that sort of icebreaker moment, but it's not required. The period of collaboration varies, and it varies even beyond this. It could be up to 14, where it's the entire semester. That's an extreme example. Uh, I don't think we want to hit that example just yet for this pilot. Uh, but it, you know, on the low end, it could really just be four to five weeks, six weeks of collaboration, and really that includes like an introduction, an icebreaker, uh, you know, and then a couple weeks of the collaboration, and maybe a week of the deliverable. And, and maybe another week of a ref reflection on that project. And so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that um, breakdown here. And as far as a, a course timeline uh, for you all, it's sort of, and I, I talked a little bit about it, it starts with this uh, attempt at team building, whether through icebreaker connection, music, it could be music, we're playing music here to begin this session. Uh, it could be a wonderful way to connect to students, but you wanna provide them a sort of low stakes opportunity to build camaraderie. And so that really becomes a very important part of it before you get started on something official, an official work. Uh, and I think this happens within our collaboration as colleagues here. Sometimes it's nice when we have that, that moment to connect outside of work or, 
or you know, maybe in something that's not related to our work function, but we're able to connect as, as humans, that to be able to facilitate that will be really important. And we wanna help you every step of the way to develop some strategies there. And then there's the, the discussion, right? What, what does the project look like? Or is it a, a collective discussion on a shared topic? Uh, you get to organize that with your co-instructor, so to speak, with, from the international institution when it comes to this project. It can be, you know, something as, a, as, you know, a deliverable, like a video, Padlet, Slack channel. It could be just discussions. Uh, we've heard examples uh, that they just use WhatsApp to sort of connect and share uh, different things within their uh, respective class. Of course, it's open to the instructor as well. So it's not like something exclusive to students. So you're able to see and navigate, you know, how they're communicating with each other. And then it goes straight, right? So once you kind of have that organized, you build some teams, you know what the, they're having to build, uh, then it goes into the project, right? What's, what's going to be that final uh, thing that they develop? Is it just sort of a collage? Is it, is it a video? Is it a podcast? This is really, we, we have multitude of examples and we'll, we'll, we'll share some uh, here in a bit with my colleague Shed, but it kind of varies in that element. And then finally, there's an opportunity, there should be an opportunity to present that work in some capacity, whether that's asynchronous or synchronous, students should be have the opportunity to then present that work. Uh, and finally, it really culminates with, with some form of reflection, right? We wanna to be too prescriptive with this, but you know, learning that then has reflection can be pretty profound. So we definitely want to create some space for them to reflect uh, on their experience and, and what they found fruitful and maybe a little bit difficult as well. Derek, I want I see your hand up. My... Just a, one quick question so that I can be thinking about it as you go along. Will our partner institutions be able to have access to our, uh, say, our Canvas site uh, and our resources that we would put on Canvas or not? That's a great question, Derek. So it is up to the instructor. I will say there is some extra coordination that needs to happen from my office with academic technology to facilitate a sort of shared Canvas access uh, with your course. But I do want to also advocate because uh, you know we talked to colleagues at FIU and SUNY. What they have really done is use tools that are LMS agnostic, meaning they they want students to collaborate on a on a piece of technology that's sort of different for both parties, right? So they would still submit within their respective learning management systems, but as far as the where they create, where they collaborate, it could be on some other system, a neutral platform, so to speak. But we do, we are creating the opportunity, we do have a project launching in fall that will require students to get access, a temporary access to Canvas. So we're working with academic technology with that. It just, it takes a little bit more coordination than if we, let's say, use the Padlet or a Google Drive, things of that nature, things are op open access. But that's a great question. Yes, that, that is a possibility, Derek. All right. This is just another example, more visual example of, uh, of a timeline here as far as you know, having some sort of initial welcome icebreaker. And this really puts, what I love about this visual really puts in perspective of the weeks. So you don't think that, you know, six weeks is six weeks of heavy involvement. No, it, it, it's scaffolded, right? It, you know, week one really is sort of a welcoming, an opportunity to icebreak, build, build some teams, some collaboration initially, maybe within a live session, within a course, but then dedicate kind of the, uh, a couple of the other weeks, two through two through five to actual, you know, development of that project, right? And guide them through that. And then that final six week is really focused on just reflection. So it, it, our goal is that this is a project within one of your existing courses, right? You don't have to rethink, redevelop the entirety of your course. We wanna keep as much of it intact and really just focus on what project could we replace? Could this be replaced with, right? What kind of big assignment could this re be replaced with in your course and be threaded out throughout the semester here uh, in, in six weeks, five weeks, thereabouts. And there's another timeline example here, I believe as well, as far as scaffolding, right? What, what it looks like, and that's, you know, the icebreaker is really important, right? You, these are potentially different cultures. So any opportunity for students to sort of get to know each other, find those similarities will be pretty profound. Uh, and then an opportunity to learn together, right? They're learning around a shared subject matter, a shared project. And so they'll, they'll both be sort of 
putting their expertise within that domain, whatever it is, whatever topic it is, uh, producing that shared deliverable, of course, is that goal. That, and it's wonderful to then showcase potentially afterwards uh, what these students have created together. And then that reflection is going to be really deep. That's something that our colleagues from other institutions have talked about being really profound is the reflection part of this process. And now I'm going to give it to my colleague, Shed, who's going to go into a little bit of some examples of, uh, of COIL courses. All right. Thank you, Luis. So I have a lot of examples. <laughs> and so um, we won't get too in-depth on them, but we have included more of, just uh, before you read that, we've included a bunch of examples throughout this slide, and some of them are hidden. So tomorrow we're going to follow up with an email, you know, thank you for attending, and we'll include the presentation so that you can look at more of those um course examples if you want to see what a coil course tends to look like look like one example this is a synchronous example so like we said it could be synchronous it could be asynchronous depends on what your goals are but this was a coil course at catholic university um, and the course was about architectural design and affordable urban housing and so there is another uh, a palestinian university that they partnered with for this course and uh, their course, the Palestinian course was Junior Design Studio. And so these two courses met up, right? Um, so the setup was that they share a Miro board, which is an online board where you can share um, not just text, but images, right, uh, Luis? Like you can use all different media on it to communicate with one another. And so um, the students independently completed the same affordable housing design project, but they based it on their own country and its associated requirements and constraints. Um, and then the students were had joint lectures each week. So the students spent time together right online in the joint lecture, getting the same information. Um, and then other class meetings are conducted uh, independently. So students post their work on the class Miro board and receive comments and critique from the faculty in both groups. Um, and then they had something which was joint juries. So where students would actually give each other feedback. So this is just one example of a course, but as you can see, it's even though it's synchronous, um, they don't do everything synchronously together. The entire course is not shared. It's that there are joint lectures once a week that are shared, but the work itself is done amongst students independently in their own courses. So that's one option that you could think about uh, if you're interested in COIL. I also want to share an example of an asynchronous uh course and so let me see if i can take us right to it but if not i'm just going to put the link in the chat um i don't know if you've heard of padlet before but it's a pretty cool platform i'm going to put it in the chat just so you can you can look at it uh on your own so you will see this is in spanish so if you don't speak spanish uh like i don't you might have a little trouble understanding some of what's happening um if only we had spanish speakers around uh but the idea here is these are two different courses that connected completely on padlet so they did not have hold synchronous meetings but instead they communicated with one another using this asynchronous platform of padlet which is pretty cool you can see that they have sectioned it out into different conversations different different modules and people are talking back to each other to see more you can scroll down each different um, column so again this is a very involved example it probably wouldn't be fun for like your first coil course right to try and make a padlet course work but that's the kind of thing that we want to help people develop eventually if that's interesting to you and you think that serves your goals for your coil, coil course excuse me all right and one other full coil course example i want to share um so this uh is this particular example uh, comes from University of Washington and then a uh, uh, Ambedkar, excuse me, university in Delhi, India. And so these two universities came together. The domestic course is post-capitalist politics. A lot to talk about there, um, but here's some details, right? Uh, they're both graduate level. So this is a graduate level possibility too. It doesn't have to be just undergrad courses. Um, so the evening class time at the domestic school was a convenient morning time for the Indian University students. And so they shared a language of interaction, which was English, which is a decision that has 
to be made for each COIL project. And they shared uh, a group project. They did a community-based group project designing and implementing a post-capitalist intervention around a theme. And so they originally used Canvas, but students said that they would rather use Padlet. So uh, we have more examples of these throughout the slides hidden, but if you want to see more examples of what a COIL course can look like, this is just a few of them. Uh, Luis, is there anything you want to add here? No, I, I guess it's just that we definitely want to help you facilitate. You know, we had the pleasure of participating in a leadership institute with other institutions across uh, the globe, um, part of FIU sort of COIL Leadership Institute. And we realized that there's a lot of opportunity to connect with a lot of schools who are in the same state as far as starting this COIL process. And so I do also want to advocate that we're, we're more than uh, happy to make connections if you don't have any, as well as facilitate some connections that some of you might already have. You notice that a lot of faculty, you're all well connected with colleagues internationally, that there might be an international partner, colleague that you would really like to collaborate with. And I think that works really well if you have, you know, that friendship, that collegiality with a professional. I, it tends to work really good when, when you already have that, um, that sort of repertoire uh, with someone. But that being said, we do, the, you know, reason of this info session is we also wanted to share with all of you, we're more than happy to facilitate and help you connect, you know, at least on initial meeting, you know, with no sort of, um, strings attached. I think that's the cool thing about this COIL project and see if, you know, you want to connect with that person, you know, with that faculty member and things of that. So we're, we're more than happy to facilitate that connection. Thank you for pointing that out. And another thing that occurred to me is we didn't highlight this so much in the presentation, but students get really involved in this work. Uh, it can be really exciting and, you know, to have, um, you know, it's a great way to um, get students a little more engaged and motivated, right, to to um, pair them up with an international partner, to put them, them in groups and ask them to really practice their skills, practice their knowledge with another person, right? Um, so um, there's a lot of really cool possibilities here. As you can see, a lot of options, which is why we want to help you. Um, and so our concluding sort of reflection question here is, is COIL a good fit for my course? So we can't answer that question, right? Um, we want you to reflect on it and think about it. But something I want to throw out there um, is to think about what your goals are for your teaching. That's something we always come back to uh, with teaching guidance is what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? Does it feel like COIL will help support those goal goals for your students? Will it enhance their learning experience? Could it help them take a lesson in the course and practice it in a real life environment? Um, and another quick thing to point out here is, you know, uh, maybe you don't see an international component to something you're teaching. Maybe that feels like, you know, you're really focused on a domestic issue. Um, but what we would, I, my little challenge there is everything is international, right? A global perspective is going to be helpful in any topic, any discipline. If you're focusing on the domestic, what better way to enhance that by comparing it to a global perspective? So it really depends on what you want to accomplish and what you think is going to be um, supportive of your student's journey. And so, of course, we won't leave you just with that. We're really happy to help you with other aspects of it, but just something to think about. So we've set aside this next 30 minutes for your ideas for us, your questions for us, the types of projects you want to hear about or share with us. And we're really happy to hear everything. A quick note before I forget um, is about these upcoming events, but also that we've got hidden slides and resources in the presentation. Um, so if you are interested in having any of those materials, we'll be sending them to you soon. And so I think we're ready. Yeah, go ahead, Louise. Thank you, Shed. You know, I want to go ahead, uh, unless there's some open thoughts here, I think sometimes it could be helpful. And I must full disclaimer, I know this was labeled for 30 minutes. So if you have to go, please, uh, we want to be respectful of time. But if you can hang back uh, and, and you sort of ask your questions or, or, you know, share some of your ideas, we'd love to hear it. So uh, Shed, I'm going to go ahead and, and add this Miro board here that I created as far as an exercise, of course, please raise your hand if you have a comment question right now, but uh, I wanted to see maybe this exercise might help sort of us brainstorm some ideas some concepts on, on what we can improve 
or what we can do or what you really liked about what we presented to you today. Uh, as, a, as a reminder, we do have some more down, like really more detailed training coming up later this summer for those who want to launch COIL in the fall or spring. Uh, we'll host more of those trainings later on in fall and spring as well. Uh, but this is more of an overview. And so wonderful exercise that I like is, is you know, especially when we presented something is, so what, what did you really like about this? What do you really like about COIL thus far? Where do you see some opportunities? And then on the flip side, it would be better if blank, right? If I had this support or if I had time, right? Or what have you, these are all pieces of information that would be really valuable for us. And, and Shed, if you don't mind, I, I'm gonna share my screen so we can um, look at it as folks are, are adding some commentary. And by the way, this is a little bit meta because uh, this is also a great tool, free tool to use potentially in collaboration. So uh, just as a, a quick uh, tutorial, they have these little sticky notes here on the side. And if you'd like, you can just stick a sticky note under the category I really like, or it'd be better if inside, you know, the connection to, to international peers. Peers, so I'm sorry if I, peers. And then I put that there and we sort of organize it that way. So that's a quick tutorial. I like sticky notes. You could choose what color you want here uh, and, and then go ahead and type it in. You can adjust the font. You know, a text editor comes up here uh, for you if you wanna adjust, but it usually does it automatically as you're typing the idea. Uh, really good tool for design thinking or project-based learning, if that's anything that's included within your uh, class. Let me put, it would be better if, but let's, let's see, what did you, what do you really like about this? Where do you see opportunities? And of course, if you have a question, you, you wanna ask it verbally, please uh, feel free as well as people, as folks are working on this. And of course, the, the questions, uh, the questions that you might have. And I'm trying to put anybody to sleep. I'll just put some music as we're, we're ideating here, we're thinking. And the great thing is a little bit of a sort of uh, <laughs> a sort of testament, right? That we can carry with us, that we can look back on uh, of this event and what we can do to, to improve upon or double down our efforts in. Something cool we discovered too is that there's a big community of coil folks and like uh, we have access to different ways to like find coil partners, international partners. So um, that's another really cool part of the project too is, is finding collaborators. That's right. Coilconnect.org. I believe is the site. Let me see if I write it connect me up. Oh, nope, it didn't come. Let me delete that. I don't know if you can share, Shed, uh, the website. Oh, AU is already a part of it. So you can kind of look through it and get to see all the breadth of institutions, especially if there's a specific international institution you'd really like to work with. The real life application. Yes, I have. Yeah. Please. Yes, I have one question. So I think it's exciting that AU is supporting this. Do you know if they have, if uh, there are any mm, restrictions, I guess, on which courses we should use? So, for example, I have two in mind, and I think you know, Louise, I've been doing this for a very long time. So 
I was doing it by myself. So I'm delighted now to have a community to, to do this with them. But um, so I have two, two courses in mind. Uh, one um, is a data science oriented course I teach between CoGuide and SIS. And I think that would be really exciting. It's, it's already online. It already has an asynchronous component. I think it'd be a lot of fun to have international participants. So that would be one. But the other is the senior capstone I teach for SIS in the fall. Uh, it's on inclusive, sustainable development. And we already reach out to organizations around the world that students can uh, partner with and, and perhaps use for their capstone projects. But uh, I do know uh, other colleagues that are teaching somewhat similar courses that would be really good to have the students working together. I could see that as a natural fit. Do you know if, if AU would have any problems with us using a capstone course as a COIL course? It's a great uh, question, Derek. I think, so full disclosure, for the first course, you're good to go, right? As far as the data science that would, wouldn't have any restrictions. However, for, for something seminal, like something at the end of a, of a program, like a capstone course, that would require a little bit more sort of buy-in, right? I, I don't know if it needs official approval, but, but I, I do wanna let you know that we did present this project and what we're trying to do here with Rose, right, Nicholas? I believe it was Rose, the Associate Dean there at SIS. And I believe Derek, she had mentioned specifically the capstone as an opportunity. So it really is a matter of discussions. We just wanna make sure to have all our ducks in a row um, prior to opening that up as a pilot or within your, your class uh, to, to make sure we have a process to scale potentially for all the other uh, capstone courses as well. So just because it's connected that way, that would be my only caveat is we just have to make sure to uh, keep Rose, that leadership team in the loop and see how we can then scale potentially from your course to the other courses as well. So we can give those students at SIS a similar experience. That's great. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. And it, which, which reminds me, we got to reach back out to Rose. So Nick, with this, put it back on the agenda. We got to reach out to her. Absolutely. Hi, Louise. This is Patricia. I think we met. Um, I'm from the Spanish language program. And uh, I just had a I just had a question. I think you mentioned that there was some partnership with the Chilean university. And I don't know if we maybe <laughs> share a little bit more about a meeting you had just so, to think about, you know, exploring that possibility with the Spanish language program. Yes, Patricia. So good to see you. Thank yeah. you for, for joining us. Uh, mm -hmm. Always a pleasure. I'm, yes. So one thing that we're doing is we are actively connecting with institutions internationally anyway. So we're building up sort of the bench of instructors and institutions that some of you can work with if you don't already have partners in mind. And as Patricia said, we have a partnership, established partnership that's, you know, more formal on the study abroad front with Universidad Diego Portales in, in Santiago, Chile. And so I've met with their COIL coordinator there. Mm -hmm. And so they are actually connecting a sort of uh, stipend mm -hmm. with, with faculty members who want to work with AU, mm -hmm. uh, you know, instructors. So they're trying to create some sort of incentive package to, to work with us because they really want uh, some, some projects to come out of this partnership. Uh, so uh, Patricia, we have uh, da da Daniel, a professor from that, University in Chile, who has already requested uh, a partnership, and we can get many more. Uh, in addition to that, I just had a wonderful meeting with uh, with a colleague, some of you might know, uh, Ernesto Castañeda, who's our, our Director of Latino Studies here at AU. Uh, he had recently come from a trip in Mexico, mm -hmm. and right, and, and, and Derek, I feel like this can, any way we can amplify your voice or have something for you to share in some of your international travels and discussions, we wanna, we wanna be supportive of that. And so Ernesto went to uh, Mexico, met with UNAM, an institution over there, mm -hmm. uh, and it pitched COIL as uh, an additional opportunity, separate from sort of his center, but an additional opportunity that institution can engage with our institution. And so it's a very casual, sort of less restrictive, less bureaucratic way for us to do some real positive outreach with partner institutions. And I, I think that's really the, the beauty of it. So we wanna do that work up front. And, and like Patricia said, we have University, Universidad Diego Portales on deck. We also have uh, Universidad Andres Bello, uh, 
uh, mm -hmm. in Venezuela and Caracas, which brings interesting context, as you all know, you're all hyper aware of what's happening around the world. Um, and we have a very supportive COIL coordinator who's actually an AU alumni living in Caracas. Oh, wow. uh, so he's all about working with AU uh, and getting instructors to work with AU. So th these are some of the partnerships that we realize we need to establish to scale, right? And to make this something more than just a one-off. And, and so, yeah, we're looking at partnerships and such uh, like that, but we have a few solid uh, leads for some of you to explore. And, and just so you know, I'm actually going to Spain in June 24. I'm going to be doing a three-week course in Universidad de Alcalá de Henares. Um, um, it's a, you know, it's a methodology, teaching methodology of Spanish. So I'm being, I'll be going to be working with the director of the program there and with a lot of professors from all over U.S. and Canada in this, you know, in this training certification. So I'm going to really make an effort to make connections with the director and discuss what we're doing at AU and maybe put you in touch with them and see if that could be also... Um, that's the little town when Cervantes was born. It's a UNESCO university, so it would be a really nice opportunity to connect with them too. It's wonderful. Yeah. One, yeah, amplify, connect, right? I think so much of the work you're doing is already so internationalized. It just makes a lot of sense to just add this additional layer. Uh, like you said, Derek, you're already doing this. Uh, before, we can see how we can, we can help support you uh, take it to that next level, especially on the technology and the teaching and learning front. We want to be fully supportive uh, moving forward. I'm not. I'm not seeing anything on the. It would be better if. So maybe we're doing. We're on a good track. Maybe we're on a good track. But <laughs> if I go ahead, I'm happy to share a screen share the database. Um, if yeah, folks want to see what it looks like. Um, let's do but that. yeah. We really do want to hear uh, your thoughts and feedback because we're just getting this started here. So um, uh, your input. Nope. I shared the wrong thing. Nope. 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 <laughs> well, you're pulling that up. Just one one thought. And I assume that this is somewhere, but kind of a collection of tools and apps that people are using uh, might be helpful just so that we can get a, a sense of what's out there that we might not already know. About. That's a good idea. Here Absolutely. is. Oh, sorry. Here is the COIL, the uh, a COIL database, basically the COIL partnership database. So as you can see, there are actually hundreds of entries. These are all different practitioners, different instructors who are um, who are running different sorts of COIL opportunities who are looking for collaborators. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, granular enough that you could search through by country, by uh, perhaps, I think some people list their like details about the course itself. Um, uh, you know, you could see people who are seeking partners here. It's a little overwhelming. Oh, here's a huge uh, ad for, <laughs> they have a lot of programming and I somehow keep making it bigger, which is incredible. And uh, so you could actually go through here, right? And you could search by the type of institution, the type of course, the type of project, the timeline they're on, that sort of thing. Um, or you could add your own institution so that you can be found by others. I just want to emphasize that you don't have to go through the process of finding a partner on your own. Um, that is why the database is here, and that's why we're here. So we're really happy to help you navigate this, or if we have someone in mind, or maybe you already have a collaborator in mind, like Louise said, and we're happy to help facilitate with that too. As, and you could see, I mean, we've got a lot of options from all over the world, which is really cool. Um, in, in sort of on a, on a phase two process, right? So I think phase one is, yeah. is making those connections, seeing if we can integrate a COIL project within your course. Uh, but in the long term, I, I, we really do believe in, in why I think it's so important to work across offices here with digital learning and CTRL is there's a lot of possibilities for further research, right? For this to be connected to, uh, to your research portfolio somehow. Uh, a lot of external grants can be, can be sort of received in, in participation in, in some of these broader projects. Uh, and so we, we definitely wanna help in that, in that phase two element to get to that level, right? How this could be connected to further research uh, to be part of your portfolio, and then as well as be a vehicle to potentially get some external grants for you as well. Uh, previous 
universities, institutions who have done this on, on the US front have been very successful at getting broader grants uh, for some of these virtual exchange opportunities. So I just wanted to kind of put that in the mindset as well, as far as, you know, what's what's in it for you, right? And, and I think we're gonna try to make it as much as possible, whether that's us helping you every step of the way, even designing, helping you with technology and designing that project. We wanna give you a little bit more of that, you know, just service orientation, because we gotta respect your time and all the other responsibilities you're juggling but we want this to be something that you really enjoy doing and, and, and feel the energy to do. I'm going to stop sharing this uh, database and um, just let folks share other thoughts and ideas that they might have, but I'm happy to link this in the follow-up email as well if you want to just spend more time with it. And I just want to say uh, to everybody, I really appreciate this. I'm going to step out, but this has been fantastic and I will be in touch for the fall. <laughs> Thanks, Can't wait, Derek. I wanted to say that this has opened up so many possibilities now. When I first responded to this in an email to Luis, I thought it had to be the same sort of class. And now it's like, you know, sky's the limit. So this is fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. And very cool examples when it's not your same subject matter, right? Because uh, then the students are adding expertise within a unique domain to a particular problem or issue or, mm -hmm. or module within a within the course. So uh, I think those are some of the more interesting examples or when it's not connected. Thank you so much for your time. This was really great. Uh, look forward to continue exploring it and, and to the next training sessions and we'll be definitely looking into it. So thanks so much for your time. And I, I look forward to the presentation too so we can have more examples and explore more of it this summer. Yeah, so that summer is gonna be more in depth and we're gonna see how much, uh, like whether it's working on your syllabi, like we wanna make it as active as possible during that workshop. So a uh, two part workshop. So yeah, be on the lookout. We'll, we'll announce it again. We'll send another email for that as a reminder, but thank you all for, for joining us on your, on your lunch break this week. I hope this was worthwhile. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. So have a thank wonderful so rest much. of your day. You too, thank you. Yes.